next photo I want to edit uh, is this one. So taken at the amazing crew hall uh, at our recent UK five day workshop. Um, now this isn't my photo, this was taken by Nick, I believe. So um, Nick, this is, love this mate, this was such a great shot. Um, okay, so with this one, I have already run the Retouch For Me panel. So we've already done that. Uh, as you can see, her skin is nice and soft. Um, photos, super sharp. Um, it's been lit really, really nicely. It's a little bit bright underneath her chin from the flash behind, but um, you know, I can sort of live with that and we may be able to fix that to a degree. Um, but just in general, it, this is just a beautiful, a beautiful shot um, that would look amazing in the album, would look amazing on their wall. Uh, it's just, um, just a really lovely, well done shot. So again, because it is quite well done and the lighting's pretty good and everything's done nicely, there's not really a hell of a lot we need to do to this. Um, just going to run through and just sort of darken a few things back and, and maybe pull a bit of contrast out so we can see a bit more detail and that sort of stuff. But aside from that, not really a hell of a lot that um, that we're going to really get into with this. So I want to do this fairly quickly. Because um, after all, if we get it right in camera, then you don't need to spend all this time in Photoshop fixing your problems or doing what I call a Photoshop glitter roll where you have to... You can't polish a turd, you have to roll it in glitter to make it look cool. Um, this is not a turd though, this is a gem. So all we need to do is give it a little bit of a polish and we are all good. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just look over the frame just to see what sticks out. Um, you know, see if there's anything that that really pops out we need to adjust. Uh, there is a couple of things I wanna adjust. Um, I wanna darken down the, um, just the, the ends of the pews sort of here. Um, maybe darken down this area a little bit and we'll see what we can do with this little area around her chin. Uh, so, what I'm going to do first is we'll... Um, might run Dodge and Burn first and then we will work with it from there. So, white brush to paint it in. Um, set on normal blend mode, select the layer mask and we're just going to paint in a little bit of the darker stuff just to sort of darken these down a little bit. They don't need much. Um, I don't want to go too much darkening because I do want to pull uh, a little bit of the uh, highlights um, or a little bit of the contrast out of this so you can see a little bit more of the detail in it as well. So um, not going to go too much on any of that. So I think that's pretty good. Um, just a little bit more off the side there. Maybe a touch across the top, across the windows. And then we're done. Like that's, that's about as far as I'm kind of willing to go. Um, there is still some highlights here, so let's have a look and see what that does if we go to a darkened brush. Um, so with a darken with a with a brush set on darken mode, it does pick up the highlights um, and darken down our highlights as opposed to adjusting the rest of the frame. So what I'm going to do is with that darken, just going to go over that a little bit just to pick up those highlights. Now bear in mind when you do that it does take a little bit of the contrast down, it does flatten it a little bit, um, which is okay because I don't want it to be too much of a point of interest either, um, because we want the main interest to be the couple. So again I'm going to do the same thing over here, and as you can see it just takes a bit of the contrast out, takes the highlights out to a degree. All right. And then if we look at that, they're nowhere near as bright um, and they're not as distracting as what they previous were. So if we go back, see how they're quite bright? Now we've darkened those back a little bit and I'm much more happy with how they look. All right, so um, what we'll do now 
is I'm going to go with the image pop. I know it's going to be quite dark and it's going to darken things back because it does add a lot of contrast. Um, but I do want to bring these guys out and pop them out a little bit more, hence the image pop. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set that to about 40%, I think, because that looks nice. I'm happy with that. So now look at let's look at this skin highlight on her chin here. Now, this is a bit of a tough one because we we don't want to take out all of the highlight. Um, we don't want to we don't want to adjust this part, take out this part here, but we want to try and fix this part here. Um, now, this is going to test me a little bit because, as I said, I'm not a Photoshop genius by any stretch. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to see what content aware patch tool does. It's probably going to make a horrible galloping mess of it, but uh, no, no, we're, we're kind of halfway there. Um, now, bear in mind too, we're zoomed in at 100%. So looking at the shot, if it's not 100% perfect, not going to really see it too much. But there is a little bit of stuff here we need to adjust. Um, so I'm going to go to the clone tool because I, I kind of want to clone. I want to clone the texture as well. Now it could be argued we could use frequency separation for this, but I, I'll be honest with you, it's kind of out of my depth a little bit, and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole so much. Um, so I want to keep things easy. So let's just do it this way, and. We'll, we'll see where the dust settles here. And I, I am on 100% here, guys. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So it does fall off a little bit there. We can kind of always put that back in to a degree. We just don't want to make it look... Um, repetitive to a degree. Oops, I've accidentally added a bit there. So all I'm doing is just taking out that I guess a little bit of blur that was there. Cool. So, look, I'm I'm good with that. I don't really want to go too far. Yes, it could be um, uh, it could be believed that's a little bit too hot um, in in terms of exposure, and you know I tend to agree, but for what it is and for how much of it you're actually going to see um, I'm really not too concerned about it if, if that's the only thing we can pick from this photo then we've done a pretty good job um, all right so looking at her skin tone um, I'm actually kind of happy with her skin tone I think I don't want to do any skin softening or anything like that because as soon as we do um, it's going to start looking maybe a little bit plastic and really and honestly um, they're not kind of big enough in the frame and, and her skin looks really nice as it is so don't really want to do too much more to that either so we're going to duplicate the layer because now I want to pull a bit of the contrast out um, so we're going to go up to here so we duplicate the layer brightness contrast and see as we pull contrast out uh, we see more of the background so I'm going to, don't normally go all the way, but um, I'm going to pull all of the contrast out of that now. Select OK, and then we want a layer mask on top of that because now that we've pulled all the contrast out, we need to paint it back in on their skin and that sort of stuff. Um, I'm kind of happy with the contrast to be not painted back in on his suit. Um, and we'll paint a little bit back in on her dress, but I'm happy with it not to be painted back in on the suit because it's gonna make the suit a little bit dark, but we do need to obviously fix up their skin tones and, and fix up that sort of stuff. So, black brush, 
and normal and I'm going to go to 100% because we're working on a skin and selecting the layer mask. So the layer mask is white, which means you can see um, the, the actual change that we've done. It's showing it um, and then we want to rub it back out. So the reason that we use a layer mask is because if you rub it out and you stuff it up, then you've got to go back. With a layer mask, you can just paint it back in. So as you can see, painting the, um, the contrast on the skin and the skin color and stuff back in after it was taken out with that um, uh, removal of contrast. And I'm going to paint it back in her hair here as well. Just a little bit rough. I'm not too concerned because you can't really see it behind them. So I'm going to check to make sure I've got it all. Paint it back in at the top of her dress here because that's a bit of more of a brighter area. Cool, so that's that's our bride done. I'm gonna paint it back in here for our groom as well. And I am gonna go over the shirt um, because I want the, the white of the shirt to come back. And also the color to come back into his face. There we go. And I'm gonna reduce the opacity of it now and paint I'm back in under here on her dress. All right, and at that reduced opacity, I'll just put a little bit of it back, bit of the contrast back on his suit. Um, but if we look, that's where we're at, and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. We haven't really missed any apart from there. On her pinky a little bit. Now you don't have to be too detailed with this because you know we're not. Um, you can't really see this so much if you were to go over into the background. Cool. All right. There we go. So now we've we've got that shot and we've got a little bit brighter and a little bit more contrasty uh, for our couple. Um, and it's, uh, sorry, not brighter for our couple, but a little bit more contrasty for our couple. And it's a little bit brighter and less contrasty in the background. So what I am gonna do now um, is with the background, I'm just gonna go to levels and just want to darken the background back just a touch, nothing too serious. Take a little bit of the highlight out. All right, so then we still get the concept of where we are. We're still in the chapel at Beautiful Crew Hall. Um, you know, we're, we're still having a nice, beautiful, warm moment there. Um, and I just really like how that all looks. So I'm going to flatten that. Maybe lazy, and I'm just gonna see what this pink bubble tea, the slight one, does. Yeah, adds a bit too much purple to that. Don't really like that. So I'm not really gonna do too much more with this. What I might just do is run the softening action to a degree. Um, now, the reason I've run this, um, and I'm gonna rub most of it out, is because I do want to create a bit more depth and. By doing, by adding this softening, it darkens the background back a little bit and um, adds a little bit of that contrast back. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub out this stuff here at the front in the foreground just to provide a little bit more depth um, and a little bit more separation between the foreground and the background. Because if I rub this out, and it's relatively sharp uh, compared to the background, or a little bit sharper than the background, 
um, then that gives us a little bit of separation between the two. So uh, if I hide that, all right, that's giving us a little bit more separation. So what I also need to do is rub it out off our couple and this particular action does add a little bit of color, a little bit more saturation to the colors in the frame too, which can be good in some regards, but in this particular one, uh, I don't really want to add any more color or any more saturation to it. So all I wanted to do was separate them a bit and just create a bit more depth in the photo by using this action that way. So I'm just going to make sure we've got all of it. And all I'm doing is just taking the, um, the results of the action off the couple. Just so that they're not soft and they're still nice and sharp in the foreground. I went in doubt, zoom out, and I want to make sure I've kind of got them all. Yep, I'm cool with that. So now what we've done is we've separated them off the background just a little bit more, just by kind of blurring the background just a touch. So what we can do then is come back up here to image adjustments, um, and I'm going to see if I can adjust the contrast in this layer as it is, which I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull uh, all of that contrast back out again, so all it's done is darkened it and softened it a little bit and I now I'm bringing the contrast back so we got that context back. And guys, that's it. Um, to finish it off, I'm just going to flatten that because I love how that looks. To finish it off, we're just going to go with a very quick selective sharpen because there's a couple of little points I want to sharpen up. Not really going to go with the sharpening of skin too much. Um, so we've got a smart filter there, so I need a white brush to paint the sharpening in. I'm going to go to, again, 50%. And what I'm going to do is just give her hair uh, in a couple of certain places, a little bit of a sharpen. I'm going to sharpen her eye, a little bit of her eyebrow. I'm going to sharpen the pearl in her ear. I'm going to sharpen her lips. And then for him, I'm going to sharpen his eye and then just a bit of his beard. So again, this is only on 50%, it's not crazy. All right, and just gonna sharpen his hair, sharpen this front part of his jacket, gonna give her dress a little bit of a sharpen there, and just a little bit here. So don't go overboard with the sharpening, guys, because um, when you do, you can really see the negative results and the halo effect that it causes. Um, you know, a little bit is is normally enough. So I'm cool with that. Now, I I love how that looks. The only thing I'm thinking is I can make her hair just a little bit more vibrant um, because it was quite vibrant. And I'm just gonna see what where the dust settles if I do something like that. So I'm gonna create a another layer. Um, I'm going to make that a saturation layer. I'm going to come up here to vibrance and we're going to adjust the vibrance. Not so much the saturation. I don't want to add more saturation because it's going to make it weird looking. Um, we might just add a tiny bit, but it's more the vibrance that I'm kind of looking for. So we're just going to add a bit of vibrance to it to make her hair really pop. Cool. That's done. We're going to add the layer mask to that and I'm going to hide the layer mask. Uh, I'm going to invert the layer mask, sorry, so that now I need my white brush uh, at 100% to paint in the color. So let's paint this color in. Now, it's very subtle. Like there's not really a big difference that you're going to see. It's just enough. And I'm just going to add a little bit to her lips as well. Add a little bit to his lips and I might just add a little bit to his ear just for a bit of color. Cool. So turning that on and off, it's super subtle, but it's just enough just for a little bit of that 
extra pop of the color that, that was there in her hair. And guys, that is it. I know I keep saying that, but that's it. Flatten. Um, I'm I'm really happy with that. I kind of don't even want to put a vignette or anything on it because you know it, it just doesn't need it, and that's going to take away our context. So, um, file, save. Love that. Um, congratulations, Nick. You did a, a really lovely, really lovely job on that shot. So, and that's it, guys.